Hey everyone. So in today's video, we're building a Raspberry Pi based dedicated firewall for your home network. And while we're at it, I will also explain why it's a good idea. So if you're interested, keep on watching. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Marcel, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and with occasionally with uh, related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. So the software we will use is called IP Fire. It's an open source firewall solution, probably not as hyped as PFSense and some others, but uh, it's still worth trying. So first, let's go to the homepage, ipfire.org, and then we will just go to download. So uh, ARM obviously means the Raspberry Pi, so you can uh, just click here and you will download the flash image. After that, we will use Etcher or some other tool to uh, write it into, onto an SD card. So let's do that. In the end, I decided to go with Rufus, but uh, then again, the choice is yours. Use your favorite tool. So you select the image and then we'll write it onto an SD card. Uh, it's important to mention that in case of a Raspberry Pi, this is not installation media, but this is a ready to run um, image of uh, IP Fire itself without the necessary first time configuration. So after writing this image, it will be ready to boot. So let's write the image first. So before we begin with the installation, uh, it must be also noted that you cannot really install IP Fire in a fully headless mode. So you have actually two choices, either connect a display and a keyboard to your Raspberry Pi, or you can go with a console, um, serial console cable. So just for fun, I will do the latter. Uh, if you don't have a cable at hand, no worries, you can also create your own. I have uh, created a video, actually it was my previous video, about how to create such a cable, how to connect it to a Raspberry Pi and so on. So I will just use the exact same cable I created during the uh, making of that video. And with that I will start installing uh, IP Fire. Okay, okay, so before actual installation there's one more thing I need to mention. So because of the Raspberry Pi has a single Ethernet connector. And uh, actually having a firewall requires two. Yeah, because uh, IP Fire handles uh, Wi-Fi a bit differently. So you will need one of these devices, not actually this one, but something similar. So an Ethernet USB adapter. And yeah, I can already hear people saying, but these are not st stable and uh, not ready for high scale uh, networking stuff and yeah they are right and um, yeah in the first place if you have serious network throughput you won't use a Raspberry Pi for a firewall so this will fit for a small scale network on your yeah home network or maybe if you just want to protect a specific device like a company laptop or something like that uh, so for yeah, a small scale network Raspberry Pi plus one of these will do. Okay, now we are over with it. Let's uh, really continue with um, installation of the Raspberry Pi. I mean, of IP Fire on the Raspberry Pi. So as I mentioned, we are using a serial cable uh, for connecting to the Raspberry Pi in a semi uh, headless mode. So no keyboard no display and uh, I already connected the cable the Raspberry Pi isn't powered up yet uh, and before connecting I have to adjust one small setting this is specific to IP fire at least as far as I know so in case of uh, Linux and for example if you're using the screen command you don't have to do anything but in case of Windows you have to open party 
and then you have to go to connection serial and uh, you need to set flow control to none otherwise you won't be able to control uh, the Raspberry Pi by the serial uh, uh, connection and okay now with that done you just press open and uh, yeah it's waiting so this is normal and this is the expected behavior unless a power of the Raspberry Pi when there should be actual data printing here if you're not familiar with the concept of using putty and the serial uh, connection in the previous video I already mentioned I also explained this so now let me power up the Raspberry Pi okay so this uh, nonsense is pretty normal um, don't ask me why it's appearing um, but uh, this is the main point so the operating system is booting it will actually do a reboot cycle because of the mentioned uh, disk configuration it will only take a few seconds and then you will just see the whole thing once again okay and here we go now we have arrived at the point where we can actually start configuring IP fire remember I refer to this procedure as installation but it's actually not installation it's just configuration uh, it's already on the SD card and uh, this is just the first uh, and one time configuration you have to do so you select the keyboard so there goes my keyboard then the time zone and then you select the host name and domain name is uh, if your router already supports uh, local domains like dot lan or dot local or something like that then something like that then you just uh, have to enter that here if it's not then you can leave it on local domain or you can use local or pretty much whatever value you want so i will just use lan because that's what my router uses and i want to have uh, the local domain name stay consistent okay password for the root user this is for uh, accessing uh, ip fire via an ssh connection so i just quickly enter a password here and this is the admin user this is for the web administration page okay so network configuration green plus red means that there's an external network uh, from which uh, we want to access the internal network which is pretty much what we hide behind the firewall so red means the external network green means the internal network the safe one and at this point you have you will have to choose um, which network adapter is connected to which network so we will leave network configuration alone by the way if you want to use wi-fi then uh, network configuration type you can select green plus red plus uh, blue which means a wi-fi network will be also configured but right now i'm not interested in that so drivers and card assignments and uh, first you will want to select one for green so these are the two network adapters actually one is built in but uh, it's visible as a usb for uh, the operating system the other one is that i have connected uh, via the actual physical usb port so i want to use this as the green network and the other one as the red network and I'm pretty much done here so I just press done and now I have to use address settings so um, 
the green network will be pretty much like a local subnet behind the uh, router except that the router will now be the IP fire firewall but uh, it can run uh, DHCP and stuff like that so it's, it will actually function like a router okay so the point is that for the red you have to say uh, how you have to set how um, the Raspberry Pi running IP fire will get its IP address so you can just go with DHCP or you can have it uh, as a static one for me DHCP is fine basically this uh, Raspberry Pi is connected to my main network and it will get its IP address via DHCP from the main router so as you can see the settings for IP address and gateway whatnot those are disabled and when you uh, set a network address for green it's uh, pretty much the IP address of uh, IP fire within its own created subnet so I already have a couple of networks but this one will be fine so it means that uh, I will set it up in a way that um, everything that is behind it as a firewall subnet will have IP addresses starting with this range or actually with uh, 2.2 so it will start but you will see okay and we are done and once again we are done and now we can choose whether we want to use DHCP this is what I mentioned just like a, just a couple of seconds ago so I enable DHCP and I will use the same starting address or almost the same because uh, 2.1 is already taken okay so it will it will uh, distribute addresses from within within this range secondary DNS uh, you can set up DNS server or um, provide the DNS server here if there's uh, one on your network so I will just enter mine this is actually my pi hole installation and we are pretty much done setup is complete so as you will see it will just boot and uh, in these logs you will be able to see how it set how it uh, set itself up with uh, DHCP and whatnot so let's just wait okay so the installation is complete and um, now you can log in via command line with the root user and the root password if you wish to or you can check out the administrative UI of IP fire so let's do that to do that uh, the machine you're accessing it must be inside uh, accessing it from must be inside the green network so temporarily I connected this PC uh, to the IP fire installation as part of the green network so I can access the UI so this is the address we have set up for IP fire and uh, on port 444 the administrative UI should be accessible so this connection is not private thing this is pretty normal you just go to advanced and proceed anyway and now you have to provide the username which is admin and the password you have set up during the installation process okay there we go so first time license agreement and here we go my PC is currently running behind a Raspberry Pi based firewall, firewall using uh, IP fire so what next obviously a firewall is not really a firewall without actual rules but um, yeah 
I decided to leave those for the next video. So in the next video we will set up rules and do some funny stuff uh, just to see what can we do with um, an IP fire and Raspberry Pi based firewall or actually router. So that's it for this tutorial and uh, I hope you liked it. I hope it was useful for you and uh, yeah if you liked it and haven't subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing so you will be notified when I upload the next video in this mini series until then hope to see you next time next week with another video bye you're still here that's good because that means you kind of like my video if so feel free to check out these other videos too and uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing that helps me a lot and uh, yeah if you click the bell button you will get also notified about new videos